Okay, let's drill down into some of the results now. So what we're going to do in this short activity is we're going to explore some of the factors that led to the Conservative 80 seat majority win at the 2019 election. So you're going to watch a short BBC report now, just some footage from the election night coverage. And I want you, from using that, to identify some potential reasons why the Conservatives won and similarly some potential reasons why Labour lost. Try and go for three bullet points for each of those. There's some space on your handout for writing those down or you can just do it with paper and a pen if you would rather. We are standing by with those crucial exit poll figures. Here they are. Our exit poll is suggesting that there will be a Conservative majority of 86, and that will be the biggest Conservative majority since Margaret Thatcher's third victory back in 1987. And if these numbers are broadly correct, Boris Johnson may just have redrawn the map. If this poll is anywhere near right, You've produced your worst results since 1935. Yeah, if it is anywhere near right, that's right. So the box is coming into Sunderland at a pace. Look at that. Now, what our map does show you very clearly is the Red Wall. I'll walk you along the Red Wall. This is through northwest England into Yorkshire. How much will this wall crumble tonight? Well, in 1989, Russia's Berlin Wall came down. In 2019, Labour's Red Wall came down. You know, this has been a hard-fought general election campaign at a cold time of the year as well. We've all been out on the road. We've had amazing candidates day in, day out, taking that message out across the country that we need to break the gridlock. I was determined in this election we would use our influence to stop a second referendum. Yeah, can That's I right. just go to Newcastle and have a look at uh, what's going on there? Newcastle upon Tyne Central. I am the first MP to be declared. So for the moment, the entire British Parliament is Labour. I'd like to make the declaration of the result of poll for the Blythe Valley constituency. Ian Levy, the Conservative Party candidate, 17,000. <laughs> This is one of the big moments of the night. There's no question about it at all. I would like to thank Boris. Because... I'm going to be on that train on Monday. I'm going to London. We're going to get Brexit done. You know, this is a symbolic moment in this night. The exit poll forecasts that the Conservatives would narrowly win Blythe Valley. This could build a new Conservative majority across Britain for another generation. Uh, Mr Snell, how, how is it looking for you tonight? Oh, it's disastrous. I've just been uh, jostled alongside here by Lord Buckethead and all sorts of strange candidates wanting to take on Boris Johnson here. We've virtually broken our swingometer here with this swing. The two main clear winners tonight are the Conservatives in England and the Scottish National Party north of the border which would suggest to me we're heading for a constitutional standoff. We've had a result in from Putney. This is in south-west London. Fleur Anderson, Labour Party, 22,780. So while there's been this talk throughout the evening of this red wall crumbling in the Midlands and in the north, there is this red wall here in the south as well. It rings London. Something like 48, 49 of the 70 seats here in the capital are Labour seats. But I think that's the issue. It's not Jeremy Corbyn, it's Brexit and ignoring democracy. So what's been happening? Well, you'll see immediately that the board gets washed in blue. When you look at just how bad these results are, this is not just a defeat for Jeremy Corbyn, this is a defeat for the politics that he represents. This is obviously a very disappointing night for the Labour Party with the result that we've got. I want to also make it clear that I will not lead the party in any future general election campaign. And I hereby declare that the said Boris Johnson is duly elected. I want to thank the people of this country for turning out to vote in a December election that we didn't want to call, but which I think has turned out to be a historic election. Well, by a majority of 149, 
The party leader of the Lib Dems, Jo Swinson, has lost her seat in Dumbartonshire East to the Scottish National Party. For millions of people in our country, these results will bring dread and dismay, and people are looking for hope. It's six minutes past five in the morning, and uh, we are now in a position to say that this election of 2019 formally has been won by the Conservatives. So let's have a look at some possible answers then. You may well have come up with different ones. There's quite a lot in the video and obviously you'll have your own ideas too. But let's see what we came up with. So some reasons why the Conservatives won, first of all. Um, they gained seats in the so-called Red Wall. And that clearly had a major factor. There wasn't a lot in the video about why they gained seats in the Red Wall, apart from um, Ian Lavery referring to the issue of Brexit and clearly the focus of the election on getting Brexit done seems to have been a significant factor in um, why the Conservatives got support and also popular support for Boris Johnson himself and we had that um, example there of one of the victorious Conservative candidates specifically thanking Boris. As for reasons why Labour lost we had a couple of different versions from Labour figures in the video. Um, England performed, Labour performed badly um, in the north of England, that so-called Red Wall, and also in Scotland where the SNP um, particularly did well. There was the issue of Jeremy Corbyn himself um, and his support. Um, and um, there wasn't a lot in the video about policies, but um, there was a reference there from Alistair Campbell saying a rejection of um, politics in general, not just the individual. Um, and so that might have been a factor as well. Okay, those are just some of the factors and we will consider others um, later. We'll be looking at voting behaviour, how different social groups voted. Um, you might want to consider the people who didn't vote. And there are debates, of course, about whether voting should be compulsory. Might not have made a difference. Um, should 16 and 17 year olds be allowed to vote what difference might that have so lots of um, discussions and debates to be had about voting who votes how people vote and why they vote the way they do so we'll be looking particularly at that uh, next point about how people voted which um, ways certain social groups voted um, later in this session so see how you get on with that